Okay, so I am going to import in the helper meshes. So I'm going to go to file, append, and this file will be um, available for you. I'm going to type in double slash um, there, and that will take me to the current working directory. Now, it should do that by default, but because I was messing around off screen, it's taken me to where the last location was. So I'm going to go up, and then I've got a um, folder called helpers. So we're going to click in that. There's a file called suspension helpers. I wonder what that is. And then we click on that and we've got access to everything inside that. We're going to grab the collection called helpers and if we click append. Boom. You can see that that has actually added it to the active collection. Um, I should have put it in the scene collection. I don't want it to live here in a monster truck rig collection. I want this to be in the master collection up here. Now, the reason I want it to be outside our monster truck collection is because these helpers are not needed in the final rig. Now, what I mean by that is if this was a mesh that was needed as a helper for the final rig to operate, I would then actually include it in our um, collections here and I'll probably call it uh, monster truck um, utils for utilities and then have helper meshes un under a subcategory. But this is not needed these meshes are just to help us in the rigging process. So we don't need to pass that on to the animators or anything like that. So let's keep it nice and tidy and keep it outside of that main collection. Okay, hopefully I was clear on that. Um, so what has that done? That it has just added these springs here that we're gonna to use to help us snap our bones. I'm going to hide our back one. Um, and this is the front one here, which we're gonna work on first. I can position this anywhere that we like. So let me do that. Um, and then I'm going to add in a new armature, uh, work on what I need to work on and then position it in uh, where, where we need. Now it doesn't really matter where this um, armature object is, is going to be, what, what collection it's going to be in, because it's not going to stick around in our scene to the final um, uh, stage. It's actually going to be applied to uh, the other rig, so it won't exist anymore. So let's, let's keep it nice and tidy and I'll, I'll put it in the helpers. Um, collection. So I'm just going to select our mesh here, go whoops, shift S and snap my cursor to the selected and then add in an armature, single bone. Uh, it's called armature. Let's just call this front. Again, the name and the data name doesn't matter because this, this armature isn't going to exist in the future. It's going to be combined with the other armature and it will accept that name and that data name. Okay, so this is called front. Uh, actually, let's be more uh, descriptive. Front spring. That will do. Let's turn on our visibility. So I'm just turning on the in front, which is my head is in front of the in front and display as wire. Let me move it up so you can see. Oops. So I've just turned on the wire there and in front. And now, um, I, should I turn on names? Yeah, I'll turn on names. For this one but I'll turn them off for that because it visually it's getting too, too much too much all right I'm jumping into side view now and back into edit mode I'm going to um, scale this bone down it's I understand it's called bone still but that's okay and I want to snap this from the bottom to the top and so I'm I'm just going to snap and remember, I have vertex snapping on here there, so I can strain it to the z-axis and just snapped it to one of the top vertices. Actually, let's snap it to make sure that we snap it to the right one. So it's going the whole way. Uh, let's name this bone. This is a mechanism bone. Uh, I want it to be called suspension. The name's going to get a bit long. Suspension. Uh, stretch. Actually, lowercase for the stretch because that's its function. Dot L, uh, and this is just the middle bit that stretches up and down. Now let's jump to the side and give it a, a bone at the top. So I'm just extruding from that top part. I'm going to make this a nice length. So let's just go 0 0.05. That will do. Let's change the name to be suspension front, uh, suspension spring front, and rather than being the stretch, let's call it top. Let's duplicate this, change it to bottom, and snap it to the bottom. So I will um, just, I can snap it to my cursor. So duplicate, then cancel, Shift S, snap uh, selection to cursor, bang. 
let's name the bottom one. This one's going to be bottom. Okay, that's our three um, mechanism bones for the stretching. Uh, let me turn on um, B bone just so we can see the size of them. I want to shrink them down now so that um, when we combine it with the other ones, they're not really massive and it's going to be a, a visually a problem then. So I'm just trying to think ahead of the problems that we're going to face later down the track. It's easy to fix them now when there's only three bones. And now let's uh, add our deformation spiral. So I'm going to um, just duplicate this guy here. And he's going to be a deaf bone. So we're going to call him deaf suspension spring front. And I want to leave off the, the names here. I'm going to start with 000. And then we're going to uh, rename this later on with batch renaming. Okay, so I want to hide all of my other bones. So Shift H to hide everything that wasn't selected. And I'll turn on my axes. It's behind my head. Oh, there we go. Um, you can see the, the bone axes, just so I can see where the Z axis is pointing. And now we're going to do some snapping. So snap, whoops. Make sure that you just grab the end of the bone. And if you can't tell which direction it's facing, just snap back into octahedral and you can see, ah, this is the, the tail of my bone. I'll jump back now. So I want to snap this and then extrude all the way up. E, extrude, E, snap, and zoom in here so we can snap it to the right spot. Maybe I could make these bones a little bit skinnier. So I'll just select them all and then control alt s shrink them down even even more so it's e easier to see keep going with the snapping so e snap e snap and our final one here everything is overlapping e snap Okay, that has given us 28 bones all the way up and they're numbered sequentially, which is um, kind of what we want. Well, I say kind of, it's exactly what we want. Control L to link select them. I could have just hit L whilst hovering over because um, they're all connected and they're the only ones showing, which is good. Now these names are getting um, a little bit difficult to read, but bear with me. I'm going to um, rename them now with batch renaming, Control F2. Change this to be bones. And then we want to uh, find and replace. We're going to replace the dot zero and we're going to replace it with an underscore. There we go, that's, that's nice. Now let's stick the dot L on the end. So control F2 again, and let's put set name at a suffix dot L. Boom, there we go. We stuck the dot L onto everything. All right, I'm going to turn off the names now because it's visually blinding me. Let's align everything so that the Z axis is pointing up. Shift N and then choose global axis Z up. That's looking a lot better. Oh, I've made a mistake. Uh, you see here? Oh, ah, okay, I can fix this. What have I done? I've just um, missed a snapping point or I snapped at the wrong spot. I can fix this quite easily by just selecting that one there and then going G snap and then I'll have to realign these ones shift N global axis Z up. All right now that that's fixed uh, I'd like to fix all the parenting and the constraints but with the parenting we actually can't do everything just yet because some of the bones that we need to parent to don't actually exist so uh, you, you'll see that. I'm just going to unhide everything unhide and that's brought these ones back. So the main thing that I want to do now and to, I need to make sure before we do the constraints is that this bone here at the top is not a child of that guy anymore because there's going to be a stretch to constraint on this bone and it's going to target that bone and it can't be a child otherwise the constraints going to go crazy. So I'm going to select this bone and go alt p clear the parent uh, and that one is going to be parented to a bone that doesn't exist yet so I'll do I'll finish the parenting on that one later. And with this bone here, I'm just going to uh, clear the parent just to show you because I think I've done something off screen. So this one, we want parented to the bottom control. So control P and choose keep offset. And that's all the parenting for those three uh, main stretch bones. So let's do 
uh, all of the constraints on, on this whole chain. Now I want to do the constraints before I change the parenting. That is so that I can do that handy trick of just being able to link select them. Once I change the parent, I can't do that. So it becomes more cumbersome to select. So let me do this first in this order and it's gonna be a smarter workflow. So what needs to happen with these guys? Well, they're gonna be parented, well each, each one of those bones is gonna be parented to this guy. But we don't want it to inherit the scale. We want it to copy the scale from our master control. So let's do that now. I'm going to select one bone, go over to the bone constraints, choose copy scale. And then uh, I'm going to choose, uh, because we're going to combine this rig into the other one, I'm going to target the other root bone first. And that is because the root bone doesn't exist in this rig yet, and it already exists over there. So if I set it up now, I don't actually have to fix it later. It's already going to be fixed for me. I'm going to type in rig and choose our monster truck rig as our target. And then the bone that I want is going to be the root bone. Boom. There we go. We've targeted that. I want to copy all of those, this constraint to all of those ones on the chain here. So I'm going to link select. But remember that bone was, is still active. And then choose pose, constraints, copy constraints to selected bones. Or I have that in my quick uh, favorites. Copy constraints to selected bones. Great. Now with all of them still selected, I'm going to shift select the stretch bone. So that is selected last and it is active. Then jump over into edit mode and choose control P, keep offset. And that has changed the parenting on each one of those um, bones so that it, oh, let's do the stretch to constraint and then I'll show you how cool I am. I was trying to show off, it didn't work. So uh, I'm going to choose our target, which is this guy and then the owner, which is the stretch bone, control shift C, and then choose uh, stretch two. And I wanna make sure that I turn off the maintain volume. Now that is just above my head, so you can be able to see that. Now, when I grab this, you'll see all our bones follow along. This is what we want. Let's hook up the spring so that it is deformed by this rig here. But before we move forward, uh, I need to disable the deformation on some of the bones. And that would be the bones that don't do the deforming, which would be that one, that guy, and this guy down here. Now I could turn off the um, each one of those individually for the deforming, but I'm going to use a shortcut, Shift W, turn off deform. And I always make sure, and I know I say this every time, but I'm going to set that to be disable. That way I know it's turned off. Awesome. Now I can grab my uh, mesh, my spring mesh. So this guy here, but before I move it, I'm going to make a copy of it in case I make any mistakes. I can always grab the copy. Plus, I'm going to use that copy to remember our um, transformations, our rotations, and our uh, transforms here. So I'm going to duplicate this. And before we move it or anything, I'm going to rename it. We'll hit Escape and then rename with F2. I'm going to call this Spring Front uh, Copy. And I'm just going to delete this whole front section there. OK, Enter. With it still selected, I'm going to stick it in a helper's um, collection. And that way I know that it's not going to end up in our final rig. So just hit M there and move it to the helpers. And that's that's it there. That's our copy. So if we get into trouble, uh, we can always come back to that one and we, we've got a great starting point. Let me hide that. Okay, now I'm going to grab my real spring, monster truck suspension spring front underscore L. And I want to snap it to our location here. Remember, our cursor is still at the origin point of our armature. So select this guy, and then go Shift S, Snap, Selection to Cursor. It should be over there, but it'll be rotated. You can see it's all askew. And then I'm going to clear the rotation with Alt R. Now it's perfectly aligned. Now I can white paint this using automatic weight, and it's going to give us a, um, a half decent result. We will need to do a little bit of fix up, but let's do that now. So I have my mesh selected, then I'm going to select my armature, or shift select it, then choose Control P with automatic weights. And remember, I'm using automatic weights because I've turned off all the deformation on all the bones that I don't want to do deforming. So click, and now let's look at this. Our spring is moving. Yay! Uh, we can tidy this up though. Let's go really, really far. So we're going to tidy that up, but we're also going to make sure that we put the, the stack in the correct order. So when we added our armature constraint, it gets added to the bottom of the stack. If we drag it above 
the subdivision, I want you to look at the 3D view now. It's going to smooth out a little bit. Boom. See how it's gone, gotten smoother? That is because we're doing our deformation before we do our um, subsurfing. And this is always a good order to do it because when you um, subdivide something, you're going to have more vertices. So it's actually, if you do the armature after it's been subdivided, not only is it messier because those verts aren't weight painted properly, but it's got four times the amount of verts that it has to move. And it's just going to be a slower rig. So if you have it in that order, um, that's always going to help you out. Let's tidy this up. Uh, we are, whoops, uh, I'm jumping into edit mode. And then I'm going to enable the deform view in edit mode. And just like our spring exercise, I'm going to just select um, one of those verts on a loop that looks good. And then I'm going to copy the weights to all of the others on that loop. So normalize that and copy. You can see that that has collect, uh, corrected it there. Let's go fix some more. So probably this, this active vert is looking good. Normalize, copy. Let's keep going up. Normalize, copy. Uh, this one looks good. Normalize, copy. This one looks good. Normalize, copy. Make sure you grab the loop in the correct order. Uh, now we can go all the way up. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to go all the way down. So where did I fix? I fixed, does here need fixing? Normalize copy, normalize copy, normalize copy. Just going into wireframe view so we can get a better look at things. When they're overlapping, there's too many uh, bones that are influencing it. So I'm going to manually remove the one that I don't want. Um, I don't want zero. I know zero should be out of it. So I'm going to remove him there. Or I could have just clicked, whoops, just clicked that X once and it's going to remove it. And then I go normalize and then copy. It's going to normalize all those verts, but you, you can see that if we select another one, it's still, um, it's, it's still a member of that on the other one. It doesn't delete it, but it will make it zero. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's keep going. So do I want zero on this one? Nope. I'm going to just... Do that. Let's go here. Uh, this one, we don't want zero. Two and three, that's okay. Normalize, flint them. I'm not going to worry about these ones over here. I will fix this. So we don't want four. We want zero and one. If any number is, isn't sequential, so zero and one, they're um, contiguous. We don't want number four in this case. Let's delete that. Normalize, copy. And the last one, actually, there's two more to fix down here. Uh, spring number four down to zero. Fix that. And where is our next one? This guy here. Grab our bottom. Spring number four. Oh, okay, here we've got a problem. We want spring number one and zero, but I'm just going to delete these ones. That'll be good enough. So we want zero, 100% zero. Let's select this, and this should be copied across. So that is fixed the bottom. I'm going to go all the way up, but I'll do that in fast forward. So get ready to watch my face, the, the face of concentration. All right, let's go. and there we go so that is uh the whole chain roughly i mean we could have been better but that's um that's done that was enough work for what we need to do like it's only a cartoon right but if you want to take it further and do some of the changes or the improvements that i suggest in the spring exercise go ahead but for my purposes for for showing you here this is as far as i'm going to take it okay so now Let's, um, before we put this into uh, the correct spot, we're going to do 
uh, we're going to build our strut on this front section here. So let me save our file and we'll do that. 